or a subclass of that class. Likewise, we can use the same kind of test to see uh, if something implements uh, an interface. This is useful because we talked about casting before and we said that casting can be dangerous because you could cast something as certain type of object that, that isn't that type at all, right? And you would get a runtime error in that case. So it's good to check, um, check the type before you, you do casting. The other thing you might do it for is if there, there um, are certain interfaces or whatever that you want to give special treatment for, you know. For example, um, in the second half of class today, or the second part of class today, we're going we're gonna to discuss an example for like an electronic store. And we'll look at their products and we'll try to come up with some classes and subclasses and interfaces for that. There might be, for example, that on your website, um, items that require batteries, you put a special message on it. This requires whatever kind of battery it requires, all right? Or something along that, that, those lines. And you're not gonna do that for every product, but products that require batteries, you'll do that for. So um, it might be useful to find out or to, to know if the product that you're displaying on the web page is one that requires batteries. So you, you, might, you, know, you, you might wanna ask some questions first about the type before you come and do that. Now one point that I, I read as I was doing a little research for this is this shouldn't replace um, handling things polymorphically. But truly if you do need to know the class you can, you can do it. For example, I wouldn't have a method on a in-county student that said calculate in-county tuition and then a method on out-of-county student that said calculate out-of-county tuition, right? I would have a calculate tuition method on both of them and then treat it polymorphically. So if it was given a in-county student, it would use the proper code if it was given an out-of-county student. So don't use it to sort of uh, use and, and use some sort of switching like that. So um, this is where polymorphic treatment of it wouldn't go. For example, I can't have a get battery function on every product in my store because some of them just flat out don't use batteries. All right, so I might want to address it some other way. All right, anyhow, the first thing we're going to do is I wrote a test uh, code that was based on uh, the example we did last time that um, used um, painted things and, and, and vehicles and automobiles and so on. If you remember, we created an automobile class, an electric automobile class. We also created a house class and a fingernails class. All right. And we implemented a painted interface. And we were then able to ask questions to anything that implements that interface. And if you remember with this, um, we do this, we create these interfaces and implement these interfaces because multiple inheritance isn't possible in Java. Uh, it doesn't support multiple inheritance. Therefore, if you have something that could potentially fit two different criteria for the ISA test, for example, an automobile, or I'm sorry, an automobile is a vehicle, all right, and an automobile is an item that is painted, right? So which do you inherit from? Well, you look at the one that makes more sense logically, the one that, that uh, it shares more behavior at. Uh, at. Um, you, you take more of a real world view. All of these things are sort of saying the same thing. In other words, you identify sort of the strongest is a relationship and you implement that one as inheritance because you get then the, va uh, the, the, the value of being able to share code as well as the, the, the benefits of being able to treat it polymorphically. For other ones then, you can then implement interfaces. For example, painted, yeah, cars are painted and so are houses, but that's about all they have in common, right? You don't drive your house down the street, you know. You don't, uh, you know, you, you, you don't uh, have a kitchen in your car and, and so on. So really that's about the only thing those have in common. So yeah, uh, there's not really a lot in common between those different items and therefore it's better to implement that as an interface where you write some functions that everything in that category have in common, 
But again, you don't implement it as a uh, inheritance relationship. If I was going to give any kind of guideline, I would say be stingy with your inheritance and be free spending with your interfaces. All right, because interfaces uh, you can implement multiple interfaces. Uh, a class can implement multiple interfaces. So uh, therefore, if there is a certain set of behaviors that's relevant for your problem, then don't think twice about implementing an interface for them. Then you can plug any item that or any class that, that fits, uh, that implements that interface into a function and, and it'll work fine. Be real careful though uh, what you choose to inherit. Make sure there really is a strong is a relationship and you can really achieve the benefits of um, shared code and so on. All right. First thing I want to show you is I want to show you the code that does some type testing. And I did it two different ways and we'll discuss the differences between the two ways. Um, for our purposes, either way is fine. Right, so if one of them seems easier than you, one, one of them code-wide does, does look a lot easier than the other. All right, But again, um, use either of them if you ever need to test. All right, what I have is I have a test class called type test that I will open up in WordPad. All right and save it to get the new lines and then I'll open it in Notepad. This is a function of me having worked on it on my Mac. All right. One way that you can tell if something is uh, a, a member of the class or a member of or is a subclass of a class or implements an interface is using the instance of operator. All right. It's an additional operator, just like the equal sign or greater than sign or whatever, and it's used to compare uh, an object with a class. So, for example, I declare an electric automobile called X, and I create an instance of the electric automobile, and then I ask the question, is X an instance of automobile? What do you think it will display, yes or no? Yes. All right, because X is an automobile. To be sure, it's an electric automobile, but it is an instance of automobile as well. So this will show yes. I can then do the same thing and say electric automobile Y equals new electric automobile. And then I can ask the question, is Y an instance of painted? If you remember last time, the painted interface was implemented by automobile and Electric automobile inherits from automobile, therefore this will also show up as yes. Why is something that is painted? All right, because it's an automobile and automobiles are painted according to this. So if I say why instance of painted, that's going to be yes. Lastly, another way of doing this is this way. If painted class is assignable from Y, all right, get class, that's sort of a confusing way <laughs> of, of writing it. That's why I said this is a much simpler syntax. Essentially what I'm saying is, is if I declare, a, uh, if I declare a, a variable painted, can I say it's created from a new instance of whatever this class is? So if we look at this statement, could I say this is what this is asking. Could I say painted P equals new and whatever the class of Y is and the class of Y was electric automobile. This method is effectively asking that question. Can I do this? I have a variable that's painted. Could I assign it a value of whatever this class is? Now I could just put the class name in there. So I could say electric automobile in there uh, dot class. Or I could say the class that's associated with that object. So the get class method returns the class that's associated with an object. All right. 
And um, if I say y.get class, it'll give me what class that y object is. So if I run these, and so I'll go, I'll go and write this a, another different way. And let me go and compile it. And if I run this, all of these are going to come out to be true. So yes, 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 yes. All right, it's all asking true questions. Now if I did something like this, if I were to say, um, house h equals new house. If I were to say it's going to return false or return no because um, I could not say, can I do this? Can I say automobile A equals new house. That's not a legitimate statement. And therefore, um, this will return a no. I need to supply a size for the house. I don't have a constructor on it for that. So let's say a medium house. <laughs> Thanks. I'd have been scratching my head for at least a minute. All right, yes, 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 no. Likewise, if I were to say something like this, automobile A equals new automobile, then if I were to say if a an instance of electric automobile it will return now because it's not an electric automobile it is an automobile so I can ask if an electric automobile is an automobile and it'll say yes because an electric automobile is a, an automobile but an automobile is not and necessarily an electric automobile. So this will return now. This statement in effect checks to see if it's okay to do the casting. Alright. Two different ways to do it. The difference between the two is if I do it this way, I have to know what class I am testing the instance of. If I do it this way, I could actually pass an argument to this function that said the class that I wanted to test. So that way is a little more flexible. All right, a little more flexible. Um, there are some other implications of it as well. You know, for the purpose of this class, we can just consider two different ways to test it. Questions about this? 
All right, let's consider our electronic store then. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about this, and then we're going to try to develop a class diagram that will include the classes, subclasses, and uh, interfaces that we're going to have here. And we should also identify if something is an abstract class or a concrete class. So let's go and look at this. Now, I have to say that to do a good job on this, we'd have to know more information, of course. Um, we could apply common sense uh, to, and based on what you know to probably come to a reasonable solution, but to really know, you know, we'd have to know what's important to uh, a, a store that sold electronics and what, what they were interested in, what behaviors they were interested in. Um, we can assume, for sake of argument, that if I talk about it, it's important to the organization. All right, if I mention it, that it, that's a, it's important and relevant. And we might not define all the methods, but I do want to sort of get the class diagram. Then we, maybe we can talk about some of the methods that we'd have here. All right. So let's talk about our electronic store. What are some products that are in an electronic store? An electronic store can sell many products, right? They can sell computers, right? And I'm, I'm just mentally in my head taking a tour of Best Buy, all right? And we'll only include some of them, but, but we'll... Um, you know, we'll, we'll hit some of the highlights. So among the products that they can sell are computers. And computers, really there, there's several different kinds of computers, right? There are desktops, laptops, netbooks, all right? What else would a electronic store sell? Electronic store would sell a gaming platform. And these might be consoles, or they might be handheld devices. All right, handheld gaming thing. Um, there might be um, phones. Now, there's a lot. There's different kinds of phones, even right. There are the traditional landlines, all right, that you just plug into a wall and, and talk to, all right. Um, there are wireless phones that aren't cell phones, but are wireless like within your house. You plug it in in your house and you, you can walk around with it. And you always forget to, uh, to hang it back up, so the battery's always dead. Okay, wait a minute, that's just my house. I'm sorry. Uh, but there are landlines of different variations. There are what I will call, and I hate to use this word for something as new as a cell phone, but a traditional cell phone, which is like a, a not a smartphone. All right, a, a, are those called dumb phones, or, or I, don't know, I don't know, is there a name for them? But you know what I mean, not, not some fancy schmancy iPhone or Android phone. Then there are the smartphones. All right. Now, let's think of other things that they sell. They sell TVs, all right? They sell tablets, you know, iPads or Android tablets. That's agreeing with me, all right? Um, and this is one way to, yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay, good, good. CD players? Um, what would you call them? MP3 players, I suppose. All right. Um, maybe for the home and maybe for the car, right? 
is one way of looking at the list of products. And we have quite uh, an extensive list already, and we we're just really scratching the surface. There's another way to look at this list, too, right? It, I could describe these products in other ways. I could say they sell products for the home, products for the car, mobile products, products with a screen, products that run on batteries. Products that run games. All right. These are different perspectives. You know, certainly a electronic store has all those things in it. Now, our job is to make a model uh, in software. That's essentially what a class diagram is. And to be sure, like I said, I'm being a little bit unfair here because we don't know everything about what the goals of that organization is and what they're interested in and so on, but I think we can make some pretty intelligent assumptions. Our goal now is to create some classes. And remember, we can have inheritance, so we can have is a relationships where we have subtypes. We can have uh, interfaces, whereas uh, an interface um, An item implements or, or a, a class implements several different interfaces. And lastly, we can have, um, how do I want to say this? We could have uh, classes that simply collaborate with each other. All right? So, where do we start on this? Where do we start on this? Someone mention a class, superclass, subclass, interface that they would like to see in our diagram. Yes? Computers. All right. So let's go and put this up here. I'm going to sort of do this in a brainstormy kind of way. All right. And we might go and adjust this, but we can start from here. Anyone have another class? Yes. Okay. Above it, you could have product. All right, very good. Does this pass the is a test? Sure. Computer is a product that they sell. All right. More importantly than that, um, is that something that we really consider? In other words, can there be a, will there be a lot of behaviors that we can um, put on the level of product that we don't have to write on the level of computers? Sure. C can you give an example? Price. price, that's an attribute, so like get price method. All right. Pardon me? It could be inventory associated with it. Um, calculate sales tax, you know, all kinds of things. So, yeah. It's reasonable to say that computers are a product that truly is a, is a relationship. And what's more, that seems like a pretty strong is a relationship. Yes? Okay. The, the statement was, is what if... Uh, and this is a good question. We're going to only pursue the electronic parts of this, but that's a great question, and let's consider it. And the question was, what if they sold stuff that had nothing to do with electronics? First of all, what if they, what if they sold stuff that was just, uh, you know, like shelving for, for stuff, or, you know, you go to Best Buy, you can buy a book sometimes, or you can buy a, a DVD that isn't really electronic, or... You could buy a, a bottle of pop, or you could buy any number of different things, right, that aren't really electronic devices. So, the statement was, is that you could do something like this then. You'd have product electronic product and then computers. And then over here you would have, unless I can think of a better name for non-electronic product. What does anyone think about that? Does that seem reasonable? 
One might, would you have to do it that way? Well, no, you don't have to. I mean, it's not like a law or anything. You know, you're going to be arrested for improper inheritance or something. I don't know. Inheritance tax. No, that's not what they mean by that. What would determine whether you would do it this way or not? Let, let, me, let me phrase it that way. What would determine whether you would do it this way or not do it this way? Yes. Information and how so? Okay. Okay. So based on the input that the user gives you, if they talk about electronic products and they talk about non-electronic products, all right. Uh, yes. Yeah. It, 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 what, what would really tell you about that is, is there anything important about distinguishing between products and electronic products? All right. So uh, I, I guess that would be uh, determining if it's relevant or not. In other words, for the purposes of this, is it important for us to know this electronic product? And, and by important, I mean, are there attributes and methods associated with electronic products that are not associated with other products? Now, let's say we chose this approach. We might make this abstract. And I think my pen just blew up. <laughs> we might make this abstract, and we might make this concrete and this concrete. Maybe this is abstract, too. All right, so that would be one possibility to do it something like that. Is there another possibility how we could handle electronic products and non-electronic products without making a differentiating between subclasses? If that makes sense, making a separate subclass for electronic and non-electronic. Well, if we're not going to use inheritance, what else could we use? Yes? Could be an attribute of it, possibly. But let me try this again. In terms of the relationship between classes, if we're not using inheritance, what's another way that maybe we could implement that sort of structure? Interface. With an interface, right. So we could have something like this. I'm going to do a Don Huffman here. Darn it. Yeah, I don't throw it at people, so you don't have to worry about that. We could do something like this. We could have a product class that is not abstract. All right? And we could then have a computer class and a, you know, I don't know, phone class. Or let's say, I don't know, a, a video game council class. And these could implement a electronic, electronic uh, product interface. All right? So your regular products would simply just be products. And computers, video game consoles, and anything that was electronic would then implement the electronic interface. Okay, so that, that's another way that you could accomplish this without necessarily distinguishing between that. Now, what would tell you which path to take? All right, how much behavior there is in common and how similar or dissimilar the items are of that. All right. So this will be a potential answer. This will be a potential answer. But I'm going to make it simpler still by saying we're just going to consider electronic devices so we can just have that. All right. Just to cut down on, on, on the size of that. OK. You always have to ask, is it relevant? And is it relevant to what? Is it relevant to the problem domain? What's the problem domain? It's, the, it's sort of the set of problems that you want to solve. And even within an organization, there can be different problem domains, you know, in, in some respect. You know, there's, 
there is, you know, there's marketing aspects of it, there are financial aspects, inventory aspects, sales, you know, all those sorts of things. What is it that you're interested in, in solving and, and addressing uh, by, by your software? All right, let's pick something else. Let's pick some other item. Or class, rather, I should say. Class or interface. Phones. Okay. Okay. So, again, that's a good point. Uh, what would be an example of something else that was a communication device that was not a phone? Okay, that's true. Yes? Pardon me? Oh, webcam. Yeah, it could be involved in that, maybe. That, uh, or there could just be a general peripherals sort of category here. All right. Um, and that's true, you know, the statement of hand, hand, uh, ham radio or amateur radio. Yeah, that, that, that could be a communication device. Um, we'll be simple and, and, and keep just phones. All right. Another class, subclass, superclass, even. Let me ask you a question. And again, keep in mind this is this is not <laughs> this is one this is one great great thing of, of being an academic. You know, I'm going to make a statement that that is going to kind of be absurd here, but. Our goal here isn't to come out with the right answer. Our goal here is to consider different things. All right? And so uh, it's good that you guys are bringing up options. That's very good. Uh, and it's good uh, that we consider them and talk about them. But again, you know, our goal isn't to develop a, a, a perfect uh, application for an electronics store, but, but to talk about designing in an OO manner. Let me ask you this. Would there be anything that would be a superclass of product. Well, we don't have a name for it yet if there is. Can you think of anything that could be a superclass of product? Well, does that pass the ISA test? Is a buyer a product? No. So that wouldn't apply. Yes. Item. And what would the, the difference between an item and a product be? Uh, other items that are not products? Can you give an example? Um. Okay. But that's not really a, a product then. Uh, well, Okay, all right, 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 right. Um, so items that you purchase, maybe? Yeah, as a business. That, that, that's a possibility. I'm not sure if I would go with that in this case, but you're right. I could say that, that, that uh, something that I purchased, something I have, an inventory item, right? Because I can have a lot of things in inventory. I can have inventory of the products I'm going to sell. I'm also going to have my supplies in inventory, I think is what you're saying, the, the paper for the cash register and, and so on. So, yes? Again, but that's not an ISA relationship. So there could be some sort of collaboration in here where there would be a, a, a class for department, but that wouldn't be an ISA relationship. And, and okay, and then what... what is the reason for that? Yeah, that that's kind of what when I had my head. Not that it, you know, not that the 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 inventory item wasn't wasn't a, a possibility too. But you can sell more than products. You can sell services. You can sell warranties, right? A warranty isn't really a product, right? A warranty you're not buying a piece of paper that the warranty's printed on. You're buying um, sort of, um, you know, insurance on your product. And, and also, if you go to Best Buy, you know, you can have them get rid of the viruses on, on your computer, all right, or, or whatever, or install, you know, words with friends on your computer for you for $40 an hour or whatever, 
All right. So there's services that are performed too, in a, you know, at a typical electronics store. So there could be, again, something over there. Sales is a good way to to say it, um, because again, then there could be products and services underneath that. All right. Um, I don't. I don't want to go that route. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll 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 stick exclusively with products. But again, I do want to consider a lot of different possibilities here and, and, and talk about it. And if truly your store sold more than products, you could, you could uh, include a super class even above product. Another class or interface or subclass that we have here. TVs. Anything else? Yes. Video game. Again, yeah. Let's let's focus on the video game systems. So, we'll call those video game systems. I'll just put game systems. Yes. Sound systems. Audio. All right. I'm gonna. Uh, any, anyone else? Like, uh, like. Okay. Okay. All right. So an interface would be. Maybe we'll call that an installable. We'll call it installable. All right, because a TV system could be installable, and maybe an audio system could be installable. Maybe a computer system. I don't know. I don't know if they go and set those up. Home network, sure. All right. I'm going to shout some things out, and we'll talk, and let's try to find out where they fit into this. All right, or maybe they fit in in a couple different places, and and we need to figure out how that happens. First thing I'm going to shout out. We're going to, I'm going to save. I'm going to save one because this is going to be fun. All right. Different kinds of computers: desktops, laptops, and netbooks. How does that fit into the picture? Where would you put that? Yes. So subclass is a computer. And again, we'll forget about peripherals and stuff. We'll assume that they're selling complete systems. Now, is netbook a sub uh, a subclass of computer or is it a subclass of laptop? I would probably say laptop. So I'll erase that line and put a netbook down here. All right. What about the fact that there are gaming consoles versus handheld gaming devices? Yes. Subclasses? You're, you're on a roll with the subclasses. So a, I'll say a console, meaning like a Wii, an Xbox, a PS3. And we'll talk about a handheld device, meaning like a Nintendo, whatever, 3DS or whatever that is now. Portable. Pardon me? Portable, Portable. right. Yeah. OK. So, all right, portable gaming consoles, right. Um, what about things that need batteries? How does that fit into here? Yes. Uh, 
Okay, they still have a battery though, right? All right, just like a laptop, a laptop. Yeah, you don't have like a battery like, you know, you go, yeah, but they do have batteries, right? Just like a laptop has a battery and an iPad has a battery and, and so on. So where, what would we do with batteries? An interface. Battery powered. Well, how would it be a class? Ah, yeah, right, right. If we were selling batteries as a product, yes, there would be a class for batteries. This interface is pointing to items which are battery powered, all right? So where would that fit in here? Well, desktops, they're not battery powered. Laptops, they're battery powered. So we could implement that interface. Gaming consoles are not battery powered, but Handheld gaming devices are. And near as I know, there's no TVs that are battery powered, although there probably are somewhere. Our store don't carry them, so we don't care about them. All right. What about phones? We have landlines and smartphones and um, not smart cell phones. Where do those fit in? Well, uh, where do they fit in all together on this? On this, uh, yeah, exactly. So maybe a traditional landline won't be battery powered, but a cell phone and a smartphone. might implement the battery powered interface. All right. Yeah. Hmm? Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So in other words, yeah, if, if that implements, if the superclass inherits it, then the subclass does too, so I could pass it. Now, let's talk about, so yeah, go ahead. Okay, in other words, let's say that Let's say we have this situation. Let's just draw part of the diagram. I have computer, all right, laptop, and netbook. And then I have an interface for battery powered. All right. Now, in that netbook, or in that battery powered interface, what are some of the things that I might have? Maybe something like an average battery life. Um, maybe a voltage of the battery. And so maybe how many batteries it requires, you know. I don't know. There'll, there'll, be, there'll be so many methods. Yes. All right, possibly is it a replaceable, possibly is it a rechargeable. So we could have those two. So we could have a number of things. Now the question would be, is if we implement that, if we implement the battery powered uh, interface on the laptop, that means that all these methods, average battery, uh, voltage, and so on, would have to be implemented on the laptop level. Would they have to be implemented on the netbook level? No, they wouldn't, because remember, that subclass inherits all the methods on the superclass, all right? Now, to be sure you could override them, if the rules for the battery power requirements of a netbook was different than for a laptop, you could override one of those methods, but you would not have to, uh, you would not have to implement those functions on the netbook level. That would be, that would be inherited. 
If laptop was an abstract class, you still would not have to implement it on the netbook level. Because even on an abstract class, you can have real functions, not non-abstract functions. All right, so I could have those. If I implemented the interface here, I'd have to have those as non-abstract methods in this, uh, in this class, and therefore this inheriting from it would get those. So I could override them if I wanted to, but I wouldn't have to define them because I know they're defined on the superclass level. That's a great question. Um, you guys are making me think, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Monday at, at close to 9 p.m., so you guys are doing a good job. Keep me alert and, and, and focused. Um, that's a great question, though. Very great question. Now, how are we going to handle this scenario? We'll spend the next few minutes talking about this. All right, and we could go on and on and on and on about this. How would you handle the fact that music could be played on several of these, right? Music can be played on audio devices. Music can be played on computers. Music can be played on phones, all right? And maybe even gaming consoles. I think my PSP can play some tunes, all right? Also the fact, how do you, how do you handle this fact? The fact that games can be played on your computer, games can certainly be, be played on a gaming device, and games can be played on some phones, not on all phones. You can't play games on your landline and you, I don't know, you probably can play some games on your non-smart uh, non cell phone, but you can definitely play them on your smartphone. And one more thing before, before we do this. And, and where do tablets fit in? All right. Go ahead. Okay. Um, you, yeah. Yeah, it, it could potentially go to each category. or not, not each category, but the relevant categories. So we probably handle that with interfaces, right? Um, I guess um, let's, let's back up. I guess the right answer isn't to make computers and phones inherit from game systems, right? Because they do share some behavior with game systems. In other words, you can play computers on games and you can play computers on phones. And you, well, you can play com uh, games on some audio devices, right? Some, some iPads or iPods or whatever, all right? I guess what I'm saying, though, is just because you can play games on those doesn't mean we're going to change our inheritance structure and make all those things inherit from gaming systems. That's more of an incidental sort of thing, right? Yes, I can play games on my phone. Yes, I can play games on my computer but it, or on my laptop, all right, and so on. But it's probably best not to think of those as first and foremost gaming devices. My phone is first and foremost a phone. My com laptop is first and foremost a computer. So um, maybe we have a game playing device interface. And maybe that connects to some smartphones, to some, or that connects to smartphones, cell phones, connects to gaming systems, that sort of makes sense, right? And it would connect to computers. And maybe it would connect to some audio devices, some of the subclasses of audio devices. All right. Um, what was the other one that I mentioned besides gaming? Music, yeah. And I would say the same sort of thing, music players, and you could put that on uh, as an interface to computer, and you could put it on audio devices, and maybe gaming consoles, and, and so on. Yeah. Tablet would be a subclass of computer. That's a tough one. All right. Um, Especially when you consider that really 
Um, in terms of behavior, an iPad is probably closer to an, uh, an iPhone. Uh, or what, yeah, an iPad is probably closer to an iPhone and an iPod than it would be to a laptop. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. That fair enough. Yeah. I, um, yeah. That that would be a good point. Um, however, you don't necessarily first and foremost and primarily think of them as that. Maybe having a processor, you know contains processor would be an interface that you could have that would hit all of these different things. Maybe instead of phones, we would have something like this. From product, we would have mobile devices. And under that would be mobile music, mobile phone, and tablets. I guess how you would decide how to do these things, are they inheritance or that? Again, knowing more about the problem and seeing what is most relevant and where you can share the most behaviors. All right? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and again, what are the behaviors that are relevant? Uh, the behaviors that are relevant are um, you can install applications on them. They have a processor. They have a operating system. You can upgrade them, right? Uh, you can connect to the web. Oh, that, yeah, that was another one I wanted to mention. Web-enabled devices. Uh, yes. That's a good question. Uh, that's, a, that's a good question. Or the fact that you can make calls on, on Skype on your computer, you know, would be another uh, possibility. Um, I'll tell you what. Let's think about this for a while, and let's think about the issues that we ran into, and let's think about maybe even revising what we came up with today to better reflect some of these oddball phenomena uh, that we have. Now, the interesting thing is, is notice that you really... How, how do I want to say this? This, this sort of is, is confirmation of the statement I said before about being stingy with um, inheritance and being uh, free spending with interfaces. Notice where we really start running into problems is when we start looking at things that could come from two different places and we don't like where things are in the inheritance stri uh, structure. So for example, If we were to put a mobile device thing here, the problem is, where does an, I, where does a, an iPod go? An audio device or a mobile device? I don't know. All right. Now, you don't run into those problems when you have not much inheritance involved, but instead you have a lot of interfaces. Because an iPod then, or, or other similar device, can easily be a, a device that plays music, a device that is mobile, and a device that um, you can play games on, even. So you really get into trouble with the inheritance part of it. That's why we want to make sure we're, we're absolutely sure of those things when we go in and, 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 and create them, because those are sort of the problem ones. The interfaces typically don't prov uh, uh, prove to be much of an issue because you can make as any, many interfaces as you want and you can implement as many interfaces as you want. All right. Between now and Wednesday, let's think about that a little bit more and we might come back and revise this and, and revisit some of those issues and, and see if we come to some different conclusions maybe. All right. See you in lab.